this video, I want to take a look at the tummy, the stomach. This is going to be our last free video for the digestive system for the human anatomy and physiology series. Be sure to check out our other videos, over 100 free anatomy and physiology videos here on my YouTube channel. Of course, we have over 200 videos exclusively available at MrFordsClass.net as well as the PowerPoints that go with them. Membership there allows us to continue to make these videos. So if we're helping you out with your course, please be sure to check that out. So let's get going with our last topic, our last free topic on the digestive system. The stomach. The stomach, but what, before we get to the stomach, we need to talk about something that lines and wraps and surrounds the stomach, in fact, the abdominal area in general, and that would be the peritoneum. The peritoneum is a thin, lubricating sheet of tissues that allows the organs of the abdominal cavity to slide past each other. If you ever get a chance to do a dissection, a human dissection, you're going to notice that the thoracic cavity is pretty... I would say pretty clean as far as things go. You have the organs in very specific places. Everything is tightly packed together. Uh, once you remove the rib cage, you're pretty much, boom, there you go. There's your lungs, there's your heart, et cetera, et cetera. The abdominal area, once you cut into the abdominal area, it's much more of a greasy mess. I mean, you have this, this sheet of fatty tissue called the greater omentum, which is like an apron that covers the intestines. And it's just fat and icky and greasy, and, and the intestines are all shoved in there. And if you take them out, you can never put them back to the way you found them. But that's the abdominal area. So we have the peritoneum, which, I, like I said, is a thin, lubricating sheet of tissues. Then we also have what I just said a second ago, which was the greater omentum, which is this kind of an apron, fatty filled tissue that hangs over the stomach, the transverse colon, and the small bowels. So if we were to do a dissection, once we remove that, now we can see the other organs. And so now let's talk about the stomach. The stomach is a J-shaped organ found in the upper left portion of the abdominal cavity. It's right underneath the diaphragm. If you remember from the respiratory system, the diaphragm is this muscular uh, structure, the skeletal muscle structure that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. This is the, uh, the muscle that allows you to breathe. It, it pulls down and you suck in air. It relaxes and you expel air. The stomach receives food from the esophagus, from the other video. The mechanism that happens here is it's mechanically breaking down food. So the stomach has a bunch of muscles. It's basically a muscular bag. It's going to churn the food around. It's going to expose the food to uh, chemicals, but it helps mechanically break stuff down. It has muscles that go both longitudinally and circular. The basic anatomy of the stomach, and we'll look at this in a little more detail, but let's get the basic anatomy out there. We have two curvatures to the stomach. We have a greater curvature and a lesser curvature. We have four regions of the stomach. We have the cardiac region, the fundus region, the body, and the pyloric region. And we have two sphincters that keeps the contents in the stomach in the stomach. And we have the esophageal sphincter as well as the pyloric sphincter. So let's take a closer look at the curves of the stomach. We have the first one, which is the greater curve, and this would be bigger than the other one, which would be the lesser curve. The greater curvature is convex a curvature. It goes from the esophagus to the duodenum, the lateral and inferior aspect. It is the bigger of the curvatures. In fact, it's four times longer than the lesser curvature. The lesser curvature is a concave curvature, a curvature from the esophagus to the duodenum along the medial and superior aspects. The four regions of the stomach, the cardiac region, upper part of the stomach, it lies near the heart, thus the name cardiac. It surrounds the esophagus opening. The fundus region is a dome top portion of the stomach. It's found above the esophagus, typically filled with gas. The body of the stomach is a large middle section that connects all parts together from the stomach. The pyloric region is the last part out of the stomach. It's going to funnel the contents of the stomach towards the pylorus. The pylorus is the gatekeeper. This is the Gandalf of the stomach. It's banging its staff going, you shall not pass. And this is what's keeping the food inside the stomach until it decides to let the food out. It's the final part of the stomach before the small intestines. Has what we call the pyloric sphincter. Speaking of sphincters, remember I said a second ago that there are two sphincters to the stomach. 
There is the lower esophageal sphincter, which is the top sphincter. This is the doorway between the esophagus and the stomach. Then we have the bottom sphincter, the Gandalf sphincter, and this is the pyloric sphincter. This is a door between the stomach and the small intestines. We have some juices in the stomach we need to be aware of. We have the hydrochloric acid and we have the pepsin. Hydrochloric acid, you might recall from your lesson two, your fundamentals of chemistry section, which seems like ages ago, but the hydrochloric acid, remember, was an acid that we find in the stomach. It's also known as HCl. It's very acidic with a pH around 0.8. The functions of the hydrochloric acid, it's going to activate the enzymes pepsin and lingual lipase, breaks connective tissue and plant cell walls, helps to kill organisms that could cause disease. Now, what's kind of cool about that little comment about help kills organisms is if you look at ulcers, for example, it was widely believed years ago that ulcers were caused by spicy food stress like that. And the idea that a bacteria could be the cause of an ulcer was laughable at the time because what bacteria could not only live in the hydrochloric acid, but could live and thrive in the hydrochloric acid? Now we know H. pylori can be found in the stomach, which can cause ulcers. Pepsin is the other chemical that we have in our stomach. It helps digest the protein. So pepsin, for P for pepsin, P for protein. It's going to break the protein into shorter peptide chains. Remember, again, from earlier conversations, proteins need to be broken down into amino acids to be used by the bodies. The peptide chains can pass into the small intestines. In our next video, we're going to take a look at the liver, the gallbladder, and the pancreas.